Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty powerful little mini PC from Menace Forum known as the HM80. This is brand new to the market and it's powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 4800U. 8 cores with 16 threads and built-in Radeon 8 graphics. Now, one thing I really love about these mini PCs from Menace Forum powered by these 4th gen Ryzen APUs is we do have the ability to run these at the maximum TDP. And with this one here, it's around 30 watts, but I find that 25 watts is kind of the sweet spot with the 4800U. You can pick up the HM80 in a couple different configurations. The one I have here has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz, and we also have a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. But keep in mind, the HM80 will support two 2.5 inch SSDs or mechanical drives if you want to add more storage. But as you can see, I mean, this thing is definitely small. We got plenty of I.O. on it. And about a month ago, we took a look at a very similar PC from Menace Forum, but it was powered by the 4500U. With that one, we only have six cores, no extra threads. And since this is powered by the 4800U, it's going to make it one of the most powerful mini PCs that Menace Forum has created with the mobile AMD Ryzen APU. So along with the HM80 mini PC, we're also going to receive a 65 watt USB Type-C power adapter. We also get some extra adapters to add those 2.5 inch drives and a VESA mount. Taking a look at the front of the unit, as you can see, we have our power button, microphone in, headphones out, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, and USB Type-C, which does support display out. As for the left and right side of the unit, we have plenty of ventilation, and we also have a built-in microphone over here on the right hand side. Moving around to the back of the unit, we have three USB 3.0 ports and two Ethernet jacks. One of these is gigabit, the other one is 2.5. We also have a full-size display port, full-size HDMI, and our USB Type-C for powering the unit up with the included 65-watt charger. So like I mentioned, this is powered by the Ryzen 7 4800U. We have eight cores, 16 threads, base clock 1.8 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.2. With the 4800U, we have built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 1750MHz, 16GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz, but this will support up to 64GB, a 256GB M.2 SSD, a pre-installed Wi-Fi 6 card and Bluetooth 5.0, and right out of the box, this is running Windows 10 Pro. So before we jump right into testing, I wanted to give you a quick look at the internals here. As you can see, we have dual-channel RAM straight from the factory. It is user accessible, so if you want to upgrade down the road, you can. A CMOS battery. They have added a heatsink to this VRM, and the M.2 is also user replaceable. Now, I wanted to get to the heatsink because, after all, this is a mobile chip, and most of the time, this 4800U is inside of thin light laptops. Therefore, they can't really set the TDP too high, so most of the time when you see these on the market, they're going to be running at 15 watts and under. But what Menace Forum has done here is added a beefy heatsink, as you can see allowing this to run at 25 watts all day long without thermal throttling. So therefore, we can get the maximum performance out of this APU for an extended period of time. Alright, so here it is. We have Windows 10 Pro installed. Now using something like this as an everyday desktop is going to work out just fine. You could even lower that wattage down if you don't want so much power consumption. And even at 25 watts, it's not pulling that much from the wall. But for 4K video playback, email checking, web browsing, Photo editing, even light 1080p video editing on the 4800U is going to work out phenomenally. As you can see, we have those 8 cores, 16 threads, uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz in dual channel, and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. Now, one thing I wanted to make sure of was that these graphics were running at its full potential. So I'm going to run a test real quick. Start the render test, and our core should jump up to 1750. And it would run like this all day long because of the way they have the TDP set up. And uh, if we go into the BIOS, we can actually change this. We can lower it, we can raise it. But in all of my tests, I find that 25 watts is going to be the sweet spot for this specific machine or even this specific chip. Once you go over that 25 watt threshold, it will help out with the CPU side of things. But what I've noticed is it takes away from the GPU. I'll have lower clock speeds in games, but it will stay boosted much longer. So I've done a lot of testing here and 25 watts is really where it's at with the 4800U. So the first thing I wanted to do is run a couple benchmarks. First up, we have PC Mark 10 with a total score of 5016. Moving over to Geekbench 5. Single core, 1177. Multi, 6435. Actually looking really good here on the single and multi side. Moving over to Cinebench R23 with a total multi-core score of 9775. 
And I also ran a couple GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark. First up, we have Night Raid with a total score of 13,155, and Firestrike coming in with a 3,098. So overall, for the benchmarks, it's actually pretty impressive for a low wattage mobile chip like this, but we want to see how this thing games, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. First up, we have Warframe 1080p medium low settings. I was actually pretty impressed here. We got an average of 64 FPS by the end of this using my afterburner logs, and I really didn't think we'd be able to do 1080p with this one. Quick, get to the console and release the lockdown. Do that, and I will guide you to your old ship. It's your only chance. Next on the list, one of my favorite games of all time. This is the OG Skyrim 1080p high, and it's going to run at 60. I did see it dip down to 59 every once in a while, but if I didn't have that frame counter on, I probably would have never noticed it. Next on the list, we have Genshin Impact, and I actually ran a couple tests here. So with this one, the way it's running right now, we're at 1080p high settings, but it's locked at 30. And as you can see, we're getting a steady 30 out of it. Looks great at 1080p with those high settings on. Unfortunately, if I wanted to take this to 60 with those high settings, I did have to drop it down a bit to 900p. In my opinion, I still think it looks absolutely amazing, and you can run this at a constant 60 here high settings. If it came down to it, and you have to have 1080p, you could drop this down to low-medium settings and do it. Forza Horizon 4, 900p, medium-low mix, we got an average of 62 FPS. And when you're on the road, when there's not a lot of stuff going on, this will jump up to around 75. But on average, we're at 62, and I still say this is playable. Street Fighter V, 900p, medium settings, got a nice 60 out of it. Was hoping we could get 1080p, but I've been testing a lot of the 5000 series Ryzen chips, and those were the only APUs that I could take this up to 1080p medium with. GTA 5, 900p, normal settings. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a constant 60 out of it, and I've always struggled with these 4000 series APUs to get this to run really well. We got an average of 58. I was really hoping that we could get some decent performance out of Call of Duty Warzone with that dynamic resolution scale going, but uh, unfortunately we got an average of 49 FPS out of this. With the 5000 series APUs for desktops, we were able to run this at 64 FPS with these same settings here, but just like GTA 5, these 4000 series APUs have always struggled with this game. And finally here, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and going into this, I just knew we weren't going to run it well. We're at 720p, low, 80% resolution scale, and I got an average of 32 out of it. Taking a look at total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, we pull 9 watts. 4K video playback, 19 watts. When gaming, on average, we're at 42 watts. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall, given that we only have a 65 watt power adapter, was 67 watts. When we're taking a look at these CPU temps, keep in mind that I have this on the stock fan curve that comes right out of the box, but inside of the BIOS you can always go in and jack this up if you want to. At idle, we average 38 degrees Celsius, while gaming, we average 72 degrees, and the maximum that I could get this to hit after a 20 minute test was 86 degrees Celsius, so we never hit thermal throttle at 95. 
So overall, the HM80 is definitely a little powerhouse. That 4800U at 25 watts really isn't a joke. I mean, even though we're seeing the 5000 series APUs hitting the market now, uh, this 4000 series can still definitely hold its own as long as you have that TDP up. And luckily, the HM80 right out of the box is set at 25 watts. When it comes to these mini PCs powered by the Ryzen mobile chips, this is definitely one of the most powerful ones that I've tested so far. I will have at least one more video coming up. I want to do a full emulation test on this. But if there's anything else you want to see running on the HM80, be it more PC games or basically anything, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about this mini PC or if you want to pick one up, I will leave links to Menace Forum's website in the description. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.